whoa, 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 whoa. This is not a TV commercial. Let's see how this thing works and how it's put together. First, let's take a look at the controls. The control screen is built on the Mach 3 CNC software with a custom design screen set to fit this application. So, let's go through some of the screen functions. At the bottom right, there's a reset button. This needs to be pushed to reset the system. There's also multiple other control buttons at the bottom of the screen. I will not go through them now as they will be covered in upcoming project videos. When the saw is switched on, you need to calibrate all axes. Above the reset button, I put in some DROs showing the actual position of all axes. There is an input box for the desired value on each axis. One for blade height, blade tilt, blade speed, and a fence position. All value boxes has an LED light next to it, along with an LED frame. This indicates that the target value and the actual values are not equal. Ok, let's see how it works. In this case I input a target value of 600 millimeters, And the actual value is 947. Press go to position. You see the axis moving? And when it reaches the target position, the LED turns green. If I want to clear the table, for instance to use jigs and such, I can send the fence to the park position. I also made a custom shutdown button on the screen, running a script to simplify the power down. Then of course there's the mandatory coin test to show position repeatability. To be able to extend the work surface, I install the flip up wing. This is great for supporting longer panels and give an additional 10 inch of surface. And it folds away just as easily. The wing is removable and could even be replaced by an even wider wing if I see the need for it. The wing support have adjustment bolts for leveling the surface. And they can also be removed for better access to the inside of the saw. I want to cut taller items or use something like a tenoning jig. The overall dust collection gets in the way. So I hinged it to be able to swing it to the side, as well as the monitor arm. The 
monitor arm has a telescopic function with adjustable friction with these nylon screws. It also swivels and tilts. All the side panels come off easily. They are just resting in the 80-20 slots. The end panel had to get some ventilation holes for the motor cooling fan. The saw box has a cutout for the lift. It is powered by an actuator like this. And this is the servo with the ball screw for the tilt. Threaded rod keeps the frame from bowing out in the center. It keeps the side parallel. Trunnions are made from 18 mm Baltic birch, and the gliders are made from phenolic sheets. The gliders are thick enough to make a slot, preventing dust packing up. The saw box has a custom lid that is secured with some magnets. The side room for the ball screw has a similar lid. A trampoline spring helps the 50 pound heavy saw unit lift a lot easier. I reused the riving knife from the old saw and it can be adjusted and removed easily. If any adjustments in the arbor is needed, this is easily done with adjusting these pillow bearings. The trunnions are glued and bolted some double up 18 mm Baltic birch plywood. This makes the frame stiff and it also prevents any racking. This is due to the width of the stretcher and also the bottom stretcher. I also made a dust cover for the ball screw. And hockey puck leveling feet for the adjustment and anti-skid. All the axis has proximity switches for the homing. It hits the sensor, backs off, then it creeps back onto it. Finally, it moves to the desired offset. The fence setup has a larger unit that is geared down with a belt and pulley configuration. And it has some heavy duty linear rails. I made this custom end unit for tensioning and tracking. On the control panel, I had to put in some hardwired switches, such as emergency stop that kills the control voltage and all movements. It also turns the saw blade on and off. Leveling screws to adjust the throat plate are accessible from the top.
I also reused the miter slot channels from the old saw and also reused some of the jigs. The control cabinet contains all the electrical components. It got pretty stuffed. The drive for the main saw, all the in and out puts for the drives, termination blocks, the motion controller, and the power supply. 